Small family sports cruisers are getting increasingly hard to find, but behind me here is one of my absolute favourites. This is the Grandeza 28OC, and it's a remarkably effective boat. It packs a whole lot into a really small platform, and it looks absolutely brilliant. Just check that out. It's a really pretty looking boat, and for once, we're not talking crazy money. This particular one here at the show, with all the kit on it, is about £219,000. Now, I'm going to take you around, show you everything there is, all the clever little tricks. My name is Hugo Andre. You're watching Motorboat and Yachting. Let's go and tour it. Before we start the tour, let's have a quick look at the stats. Now, it is 8.8 .8 metres long. It is 2.85 metres wide. It weighs around three tonnes, and it is powered by a single either petrol or diesel engine. In this case, we've got a 350 horsepower petrol engine, which should give a top speed of around about 30 knots. But you can also get a 270 horsepower Mercruiser or Volvo D4 diesel, I think, of around 300 horsepower that'll give similar kind of planing performance to the petrol, but with a, a bit less top end and a bit more torque. Now, what they do is build a really smart boat that's practically thought out. It has everything in the right place and it's really well finished. So here, for example, we've got a lovely teak bathing platform. You can see we've got a good rubber fender rub rail all the way around it. There is a swim ladder under there. And then this rather handsome sun pad here. This is in sun pad mode. You can see we've got inset cup holders on both sides. We've got a grab rail around the edge. And if I lift that up, you can see there is a very sensible storage locker here. Now this is what the fins tend to do so well. They just think through all the practicality. So we've got space for four very smart fenders, all with their Grandeza branded socks on them. Nice place for the lines, gas strut to hold it upright and a latch to lock it in place when it's down. It's not rocket science, but it's just very well thought through. You can see we've got zips here for a canopy that will zip all the way around this. And that becomes important because I'll show you why in a minute. We've got Teak steps up to the side decks. Whilst we're here, it's also worth noting that we've got pop-up cleats here. Very handy if you're tying off a tender or a kayak or an inflatable paddleboard, as well as much bigger, more secure ones for when you make the boat fast at the end of the day. Now, the side decks are quite narrow, but because these guardrails flare out a bit and we've got sensible hold handles up here, it's actually easy enough to move along them. So if we step along here, we've got a fuel cap, that's for the diesel, that's for the heater and the cooktop. We've got the main tank for the fuel itself, either petrol or diesel, depending what the engine is. And we've got a waste pump out for the heads compartment. Now, when we get to the foredeck, you'll see there is another sun pad here. It's got the cover on at the moment, obviously. And then another little teak wrap around here. Just adds a nice touch of class rather than just GRP everywhere. Smart stainless steel anchor, all in position. Look in the anchor locker. We can see we've got an electric windlass too, all nicely flow coated out on the mouldings. So it feels nice and solid and locks back down into place. Step through if you want to come off the bow itself and then another walkway down that side. I'm not gonna go down that side. It looks a little bit perilous because of the fall there. Two piece windscreen big opening sunroof and I'll show you how that works from inside. But what is difficult is creating a boat of this size with a hard top that looks good. And Grandeza have done a very neat job of making that all work. You can see that the sunroof has got glass panels in it. So even when it's closed, you do get light coming through. And the other thing to note is that underneath that, we've actually got solar panels just to keep the house batteries topped up so that you can run the fridge and lights and so on without worrying that you're gonna flatten the battery. Another grab rail here in exactly the right place. And then as you come into the cockpit, you'll see there is a gate. And it's just, again, it's a small thing, but if it's a family sports cruiser and you've got young kids running around, you really want a gate just to keep everybody safe and secure. There is a shower there, and it is the only shower on the boat. Uh, so it, as well as being rinsing off when you've come out of the sea after a swim or something, you can actually have a proper shower on board on the bathing platform. Now this sun pad, we've got the headrest in the down mode. If you lift the table up, you can actually alter the angle of that a bit. 
and of course the whole thing swings over and then it becomes part of this lovely dinette. Now I'll put the table up in a minute so you can appreciate how that works. The reason it drops down this low is because there's also an infill cushion so that you can create an extra double bed there. And with the canopy up and in place all the way zipped in around here and along this track, it does become a really nice secure place. So sure, it's sort of half outside, but on a lovely summer's evening with the canopies in place, that's a perfectly viable bed. Now the galley, I think very sensibly, is up here in the cockpit. So rather than just a wet, wet bar, it is a proper little galley. We've got a sink, a little lift up lid for that. Not the largest in the world, but big enough. We've got that Wallace diesel hob. So again, you're not going to need a generator to run that. You can fire it up at anchor without needing to be plugged into shore power. Got some useful storage all around it. I'm not going to open all the cupboards. What I will show you is that under here is one fridge. So very handy to keep your drinks in that one. But that's not the main fridge. There is a secondary one under here. So you can put, I think that's actually locked. Oh no, there you go. So you can keep your food in there, your drinks in the other one, and you've got space for all of them. Now, another really neat little detail, you think, okay, well, you've got all the galley there, but a little bit limited on workspace. We can solve that too. That seat just folds over like that. This pulls out of here. And you simply slot that in place. It's a little bit tricky one-handed, but you can see that slots into there and then you've got another work surface to prepare your food. I just love the ingenuity and the simplicity of it. It's nothing overly complicated, but just works really well. And then the seat swings back over, locks into place, and then you've got a really comfortable, secure co-pilot seat. Now I'll just lift that table up for you. That's on an electric leg. So there's a switch over by the helm here but just wanted to show you how nice that looks when it's set up in full dining mode. Just takes a little bit of time to come up to height. I won't go all the way, but you get the picture. It's a very lovely, solid teak table, beautifully finished, inbuilt cup holders for your drinks. We've got speakers there, another handhold there. So again, really nice to have forward facing seats on a small cruiser. It's always gonna be a little bit lumpy and bumpy, so to have three forward facing seats at the back here, another three forward at the helm, really good on a 28 foot size boat to have that. Deep single piece side screens means you get an excellent view out. You're not trying to work your way around mullions. There's a thin mullion there and a second one in the middle there. But overall, again, for a small boat with a hard top, visibility is really impressive. Now here is that sunroof I showed you earlier. Nothing too fancy, it's a manual one, but if I pull that out, it just very quickly and easily slides into place. And then you've got a very secure boat. So you've got the weather protection, you've got the visibility, but it all opens up when you want to enjoy a bit of sun. Helm is very smartly done. We've got, again, the same matching quilted seats here. We've got lift up bolsters if you want to give yourself a bit more of a sort of standing position, steps up to the helm. I'm going to open that up so I can show you what it's like to stand there too. Nothing overly flash about the helm, but very sensibly they've kept it in a kind of matte black finish, so it's not going to, you're not going to get too many reflections or anything. Wheel, throttle, very nicely sighted, exactly where it should be. You've got a bit of adjustment on the seats. You can push them forward and back a bit. You can see they're on tracks here. And then with that roof closed, you've got room to sit down. But if you want to stand up, you can poke your head out the top and it's a really good standing driving position too. Has a built-in thruster, just makes it a little bit easier with a single engine boat when you're berthing in a difficult side wind. And this is another nice touch here. You've got a proper compass there, but that lifts up and then there's a sensible storage place for screen covers, sunglasses, handheld VHFs and the like. Right, let's drop down to the cabin. That's just a sliding perspex door. And this is where it really comes into its own. For a 28 foot boat, we've got a very smart little cabin down here. Now we've got hull windows letting light in. We've got little opening ports too. 
And you look at it and you think, okay, well, that's a, you know, good enough double bed. It's a little bit slim, but this has another trick. If I pull that cushion out there, this, oh, just get that behind me. This panel here, very quickly, very easily slides out like that, rests on top of that little lip there, fill in cushion there, and then you've got a properly wide double bed. So simple, so effective, so ingenious. Absolutely love it. Slide it back into place, put that cushion back, and then you've got a lovely little bench to sit down if you just wanna, if it's a little passing rain shower or some such, or the kids just wanna come down here and play, super job. And that's not all. Swivel round, look behind me, and there is another small bed. Now that's a pretty narrow double for a couple of kids, but probably more realistically one, but for a, a, a single person, that's really decent size. There are the filling cushions that I showed you earlier for both the cockpit and this bed behind me. We've got a little curtain that pulls across, giving a bit of privacy, We've got a reading light, and some useful storage. So one locker there, and if I spin around in here, we have a heads compartment. Now it is literally just a heads compartment. It's not a wet room with a shower, but there is a proper sea toilet in there. There isn't an enormous amount of headroom. You can see there is a bit of a step up. So once I get in here, it is very much sitting room only, but there we go. Perfectly comfortable. It's a private separate heads compartment. In fact, there is a pull out shower in here. It didn't look like there's a drain under there, but there is, if I look under that carpet, there is in fact, a draining locker under there so you could sit here and have a shower in the heads compartment and there's not a lot of wiggle room but nevertheless on a 28 foot boat respect they've got a loo they've got a shower they've got a sink they've got a small opening port and there's even a little bit of storage under here so there we go i probably ought to point out as we come through here there's also a bit more storage under all these seats. They're just sliding soft touch drawers. They're all the same, nothing particularly clever, but it's nice that they're done in wood and they have proper soft close uh, latches on them. Now, the final thing to show you is the engine compartment and that's all over here. You can see we've got all the, the controls and the breaker switches here. So I believe if I press that one there, if I look behind me here, this whole aft section. So often the problem on these uh, small sports cruisers is that the access to the engine is pretty limited, not on this boat. You can see that whole aft end is hinging up on a electric ram. We'll pause probably round about there is enough. I think it will go further, but I think we've made the point there. Here is that single 350 horsepower Mercruiser engine, good for sort of 30 knots or so, 6.2 litre, so should have plenty of torque. And I love the fact that you can get all the way around that. It's a very nice, clean engine bay. You can see we've got a decent amount of insulation on the sides here and a bit of foam up here. So it should be nice and quiet too. Petrol's always a bit quieter than diesels anyway. It's a nice smooth V8. And then with that extra sound insulation around there it should be very civilized that's the battery box looks like there's uh, sort of access to all the pumps and so on raw water strainers very simple very neat installation but i love the fact that it's so easy to get to right let's just close that up that is the grand desert 28 oc really clever good looking compact little boat that seems well finished and well built at a sensible price. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around something a bit more mainstream, a bit more affordable. I think it's a cracking little boat. Do let me know what you make of it in the comments. And thank you for watching.